I'm Kate Bernard. I'm Boyle Timson. And we were co-directors of a play called Modern Vocabulary written by Lucy Zebel. It is about a second grader who is a literary genius, but none of the adults around him seem to realize that. It does contain mild profanity, so be advised. Enjoy the show. <laughs> The child of my effort rears its head, blanketed by the knowledge of those beyond scholars. Stephen. Can you come see me for a second? My father awaits his wrath. Bring him to. Stephen. So, I'd like to talk to you for a moment about your journal writing. Your vocabulary is very interesting. Do you mind if I ask where you've seen some of these words before? Maybe you've made a few of them up? Made them? I shall not be bereaved of my virtue by an ineffectual debutante. Stephen, what? Well, Stephen, I'm certainly very impressed with your imagination. However, I want to make sure we're progressing with the learning as much as possible. I think some tutoring or extra help might do you some good. You enjoy writing, don't you, Stephen? I think that some um, tutoring could be helpful. After all, there's always room for improvement. Fantastic. I'll make some preparations. We can start tomorrow, if that's all right for you. All right, it's settled then. Stephen, I'll see you tomorrow. This wretch will feel my wrath, thine own terror, which it seems I felt. Put one out of your misery. Hi, Stephen. How is your day at school? The feeble concepts your mind will hold cannot illustrate the malcontents I am brewing. What do you mean? It matters not. My own thoughts are no concern of yours. I know this is a direct result of that curse. Calm down, Stephen. Don't touch your mother with that. You know nothing of the trials I have faced, haggard peasant. I beg your pardon? She has summoned thine wretched spirit, turned my own forces against me. Stephen, I think you're overreacting a bit. It's just an hour of tutoring after school so you can improve your English mark. Thine souls and mine hath been poisoned, poisoned by the witch that hath coiled her bony finger on the barren canvas of you. She never heeds my warning of heresy, a mutiny of adolescence hell bent on casting your darkened robe in the light of their knowledge. Your teacher only wants you to improve on your vocabulary and sense instruct using the language. I possess the elocution of the thousand scholars that came before me. The hag presses false words of their similitude to your feeble mind. The lies she spews are infused with the jealousy and the sanctimony of one who believes they are God chosen. Your teacher doesn't think that you're better in English. Than you. She just wants to get you the extra help you need to succeed the best you can. Your last essay only got a few minus. It is because she does not possess the comprehension of one's sanity to read the eloquence of my written word. She's an English teacher, Stephen. Then one would assume she would have obtained proficiency in the language in which she claims to hold a sufficient education. I'm sure Mrs. Thomas learned to be used the conscience of those awakened from the slumber of idiocy baffles that those grown in society, like weeds in thine mother's garden, you worship meager peace as a parchment given for mediocre tasks. I could gift one, and the very same to a baboon, and be given my teachings no different. Stephen, it's not polite to compare people to baboons. <laughs> Besides, you never know when you might learn something new. Tutoring could be a good thing. In the same way a knife in the back was good for Caesar. Or a hole in the head? Precisely. Stephen? 
I know you don't want to, but I think you should go. At least for a couple of sessions, just to see what it's like. Mrs. Clemens knows you and can help you. Fine. Hi, Stephen. Glad to see you could make it. Are you ready to get started? I prefer to burn myself at the stake. Okay. Well, we can start with something easy. Why don't you sit down and I can begin this spelling test. All right. So, the first word is Monday. 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 M-m-m-monday. You wish for me to spell Monday? I know it can be difficult, but that's why you're here. To learn. All right, what is the next task you shall beset upon me? The next word is a hard one. Could. 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 Would you stop with that infernal repetition? My mind will battle with the migraine second from taking root. Huh? Oh, okay. Just voice the list out loud. I shall write them quickly. Um, where, question, money, bring, Dick, house. I've completed. Fantastic, Stephen. Well done. In record time, too. Where did you learn to write in cursive? When I was but a child. Huh. Well, you did great. How about we move on to some reading? Are you still reading books at home? 15 minutes every day? Yes. All right, that's very good. What's your favorite book? I can make a list of similar ones for your parents to get for you. Odyssey, currently, or perhaps Beowulf. The side between the two would be mutiny against myself. Okay, I've never heard of those books before. Do they have nice pictures? Pictures? Yes. <laughs> I've heard a lot of your classmates like Robert Munch. His pictures are always very good. Right. All right, I'll send your parents an email about it. Very well. Okay, do you want to move on to writing? It seems as if you're giving me a choice. Nope. Okay, so your prompt is to write about something you've dreamt about. Beheading my enemies. Maybe like going to the park with your friends. As you wish. Dost thou mind? What does this mean here? The darkness represents the absence of kindness, the agony of being alone, the despair and emptiness of one's cruel and open heart. Okay. <laughs> we can continue tomorrow. That's enough for today. Bye bye. That kid might need therapy. So how did it go, sweetie? To be perfectly and incandescently honest, that bitch is empty. No coherent thoughts. <laughs> One might assume she had no soul. Uh, Stephen, even though you might not have had a great time, we're still proud of you for going. It's not easy admitting that you need help, and we're glad you did. I have admitted no such fallacy. Either way, we'll Keeping your best foot forward. Mrs. Thomas must be proud of you too. Yes, very proud. Well, what did you do? Participated in mild lunacy. Not in the slightest. Did you do any sort of practicing? Mrs. Thomas already emailed us about the reading. Of course she did. Any spelling, writing practice? Wow, Stephen, the calligraphy's really progressed. I like the extra little scrolls of the wife. Well done, Stephen. I'm quite impressed. As one should be. <laughs> I know it's hard, Stephen, and I know how much you dislike Miss Thomas, but she genuinely does care about how well you do in school. You succeed in all of your other subjects, and she just wants to push you to be the best that you can be. That wench mocks me. The taunt of her demand burns my amour prop. Stephen, use English, please. I mean, 
That's the whole problem. The words I speak are English. The phrases adapted to your laughable version of the language are from France. It's not my own fault that originality is scarce in the mind of the weak. Stephen, do not raise your voice at me. It is as if the communication is halted at the gate, if not for the addition of stupidity. Wherefore, doth must I dumb it down so? I hope you're going to your room because back talk like that earns you a one-way ticket. Thy metaphors aren't weak. <laughs> Steven, you're not making this easy. Hello. Mrs. Thomas? Mr. Anderson, what may I help you with this fine hour? I'm afraid Steven isn't taking well to the tutoring. He's quite frustrated. I understand. I got the impression he's not enjoying himself. I was wondering if there was a different tactic you could use. I have a feeling he's learning his best done separate from others. I completely agree. Did you have something in mind? Maybe the principal or another teacher? Just someone to help him focus on something other than one on one. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Welcome, Stephen. I'm glad you came back. There was little choice on my part. That doesn't surprise me. Now, we have something different planned today. I have someone special coming in to help you with your tutoring. They're scheduled to be here in a few minutes, so until then, we can do more practice. Sound good? Once again, I have not much of a choice. All right. So I have some more spelling practice for you. I'm assuming you prefer I give you all the words at once? Preferably. Well, we're doing it my way. All right, so your first word is because. 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 Andrea! Oh, Professor Goldstein, I'm so glad you can make This must it. be the trouble young lad you informed me about. I had my assistant inscribe your email into a letter. You know how I like to do it old school. Afternoon, boy. Sir, I hear you've been having issues with your studies. Well, I've been teaching English since it was invented, so you'll be assured I'll be of most help to you. I've just been practicing my spelling. Spelling? Boy, I can see from here you're plenty capable of spelling. Just look at that penmanship. Magnificent. What else can you do? Uh, oh, we did some writing yesterday. Spectacular. Let me see it. Whoa. Professor, I'm sure you'd prefer to read something slightly Nonsense, more. give it here, boy. Spectacular, tremendous, absolutely splendiferous. <laughs> no, no, no need to explain. My God, how old are you? I've just turned eight, sir. Eight. Andrea, how dare you keep him from the world? With this, you could be in my classes. How you could teach my classes, Andrea. This boy could as, might as well be Charles Dickens, William Faulkner. All that glitters is not gold. Andrea, this boy might as well be the next William Shakespeare. <laughs> Who? Genius. Incompar incomparable. Come, boy, we have much to do. <laughs> Who? 